Hey guys, Mr. Lin here. We are here in my garage and I'm going to teach you about some block printing. This is going to function as our studio space. Got some of the supplies set out here. And yeah, check it out. Alright guys, this is going to be done in first person point of view using my Go pro camera here for some extreme art action. Anyway, the first step is going to be to draw a design. Um, I don't necessarily think my design here is the greatest uh, composition ever, but I was thinking about using the whole space. It's supposed to be kind of like a <clears throat> like the head of a samurai warrior guy. So, you're going to draw it out. Um, try to use some pretty dark pencil lines because when you're going to transfer it to the block that needs to be nice and heavy and then I think most of you will benefit from making a second copy which I've already done here so you can run down to the library use the photocopy machine make a second copy put the original one aside we're going to need that later that's really important but you can put it aside for now the second copy, we're going to just color, either with colored pencil, or I didn't have any colored pencils hanging around my house at the moment, so I'm going to use watercolor paint. You guys can do the same thing, um, either colored pencil or watercolor paint, depending on your preference. We've got both of those things in the art room, so i got to kind of figure out what, what colors I'm going to use for this thing, so maybe I'll, I'll start by you know, filling in. Watercolor is probably a little bit faster. His hair here, something like that. Kind of fast forward, time lapse. Ooh. Okay, so maybe color two here ends up being red. So we've got two colors so far. Need one more, and then there's some areas that I need to leave the white of the paper. Okay, the third and final co color I chose to use was black, and I just kind of used that in a couple of these background areas, and then some of these shadow shapes around the face. You can kind of tell I messed up his mouth there. Our teachers mess up too. But again, this doesn't have to be a masterpiece. This is just kind of planning out uh, your color scheme. So once you have this painted out, you can go back to your original and figure out what you're going to cut first, second, third, etc. So I left some areas white. Those areas are going to be color of the paper. So those are the very first things I'm going to cut. So I can put a number one on anything that's white, like here, here, here by his ear. Okay. Um, then let's say the things that are red, <coughs> I'm going to reveal the next time. So anything that uh, is red, I'm going to cut next. So it gets revealed. So these little spaces here. So I'm putting number twos here. Two, two, two. And this little headband thing up here as well. And then anything remaining, which is just the blue spaces, would be kind of the last things left on the block that I print. So that's going to be number three, three. And some of these individual stripes down here, number threes. Um, hopefully, in a sec here. This will make a little bit more sense when we actually start printing. But the gist of it is just color your block the way you want it to be. Choose only three colors. And don't forget to leave some of the things the white of the paper. Alright, let's move on to printing. Alright, the next step actually is we're going to transfer this drawing onto the rubber uh, printing block. So the way we're going to do that is just kind of line up the corners of this. And don't forget, you have to have these lines uh, really heavy, heavily drawn with graphite. Try to make it relatively smooth. I know mine's a little sketchy, but relatively smooth. Draw the lines really heavy because that will help the graphite transfer to the rubber block during this step. So I'm going to line this up carefully. And then I'm going to try not to move it while I flip it over. And then I'm going to hold the paper still. That's very important. So it doesn't move around us. And on us, I'm just going to take one of the spoons and kind of rub and burnish the back of it. And basically, what we're trying to do is transfer the drawing from the paper onto the rubber block. You can see it's starting to happen. 
this block, this rubber block is kind of old, so I'm not sure if it's going to work as well as the one, new ones that you guys have, but I'll do my best. My experience is that it usually transfers a little bit better than this, so you guys should, shouldn't have too much trouble with it. The key is to not let the paper move. If it moves, you get this kind of double image looking thing. You can kind of hold it in place and test to see how it's going. If it's not transferring very well, then press harder in that area. Maybe this corner could use a little bit more work. Again, I don't think it's going to take you guys this long. Anyway, you get the idea. You can see uh, the image basically transferred. If there are some areas that didn't uh, come out that well, you can always just come back in here and just kind of re-sketch them and redefine them. You also notice that the image, the transferred image, is is the reverse or mirror image of the original image. When we print it, that will flip again back to normal. So if you have any text or writing in your design, just write it the, the correct way. Write it forward. It'll flip backwards on here, and then it'll flip back forward forwards when you print. So we'll do the transfer. Um, then we can actually go straight to cutting. So these are the gouges. Um, be careful with them. Always cut away from yourself. Don't have your hand in the way. This material is relatively soft, but um, you can still cut yourself because they are the tools are sharp. The ones that you guys have at school look probably more like this. You can see some of them have a finer tip for details. Some of them have a bigger scoop for moving more material from the surface of the block. So if we look at my plan again, I can start cutting out the things I put a number one on. And anything I cut out now, remember, is going to turn out the color of the paper, which is white. So I can come in here and start removing stuff from the surface, like so. And you can think about the different textures uh, you can make with this. It's kind of one of the cooler parts about printmaking is kind of, I like to leave some of the little bits on the surface because it makes this kind of distinctive pattern. If you don't want that to ha happen, you have to make sure that everything is cleared off the surface. Don't have to go much deeper than that either. That's maybe only, you know, an eighth of an inch or so. Um, what's cool is if you don't go so deep, you can do another design on the back side too, so you can get, um, you know, two for the price of one here. So I'd go ahead and carve out all of that stuff and uh, I'll show you in a sec what it looks like when I'm done. Alright, you guys are going to have to use your imagination for, for a sec here um, because you'll notice that suddenly this is facing the other way. That's because I had actually done this previously and I'm trying to recreate it as if the process was uh, done the first time. You can see the one I was just carving on is actually in reverse. But imagine that it was facing that way and I had just finished carving out all these bits. So I've carved out all the areas uh, for the first uh, color, the color of the paper here. Um, by the way, this device here I'm, I've, I'm working with, it's called a bench hook. Not really necessary with for this soft rubber material because you're, you're unlikely to slip and cut yourself, but you can kind of see it's got uh, a hook here. When I lay it on the top of my workbench it stops there so when I if I had like a wood block or something then I had to use more pressure to carve uh, I could put this up in the corner and that keeps it from moving around on me anyway so I've done my first area of carving and we're ready to ink this thing. Um, before we start printing we should probably figure out where these prints are going to go on this piece of paper we we have a bunch of these kind of cool long um, sheets of paper and we decided to use them this year for printmaking and I was thinking since your guys' blocks are four by six inches which is a shape this size that fits pretty neatly four in a row in the middle of this so it'd be like kind of a series of prints with different colors um, again kind of in that Warhol style um, so we gotta figure out how to center these this whole entire sheet of paper is about 25 inches wide and each of these is four inches wide, so four times one, two, three, four is 16. 25 minus 16 is nine. You can see my math here. So nine divided by two is four and a half. So I know that this thing has to start four and a half inches from the side here. So I'm gonna make a mark 
at four and a half inches. And then we're going to do the math from top to bottom as well. So this thing is close to 12 inches um, from top to bottom. A little bit less, but I think that'll be close enough for our purposes. So 12 minus the six inches that this is equals six divided by two for the space on both the top and the bottom is three. So there'd be three inches from top to bottom. So we could kind of go measure down like so. Make a mark at three inches here. That's all you really need. Um, you don't want to make these marks very dark because you don't want them to be seen in the end. But I'm going to kind of just go like this so that I know I can roughly position my first print um, up in this upper left hand corner. And then each additional one, all I have to do is place the print or register it right next to that one. I don't actually have to measure those out because I'm just going to be putting them one next to the other. If it's okay if they're not perfectly straight, when we mat this, you can kind of even out the borders and, and kind of straighten that out, I think, just by eyeballing it. So at least we got to figure out that position right here for our first print. Okay. Okay, you've seen that we have the tubes of ink. We also have these jars of ink. And I'm going to do my three color print with this hot pink, this kind of turquoise color, and then black. Um, mainly what I'm looking at when I'm choosing colors is just that they're going to contrast and show up against each other. If you have two colors that are too similar, um, that could be a problem. So like red and orange right next to each other might look okay, but you might not be able to tell the different parts apart because they're so close on the color wheel. So we'll start with some pink, see how it goes. I'm going to dip a little bit of this ink out with the palette knife um, and then kind of spread it out in this area uh, in about the width of the brayer. So kind of like so. And then scrape kind of the excess ink back into the, the jar there. And then for the, the first go, I'm just going to kind of try to load the brayer with ink. I'm just picking up ink. I'm notice I'm not making a big mess of my whole glass area here. Um, just loading the brayer with ink, and then I'm going to kind of designate another patch here just to kind of distribute it on the brayer more evenly kind of miss in the center there so I might try hit it from a couple different angles until it seems like it's distributing. Now this is way too thick. You can probably hear how like sticky that sounds. It's got kind of this weird texture to it. It's too thick for me so that's why I'm going to designate this area over here to kind of try to smooth that texture out and it looks closer to more like an orange peel and I get that nice fine hiss happening instead. So try to control your, your glass plate this way and not just you know cover the entire area with ink and then you have no control over the consistency. So we're going to come over here. Um, this is water-based ink and it does dry kind of quickly so my experience is you usually get your best print like the first go around um, and if you wait too long and you mess around with this too much, the ink starts to kind of dry up and then it doesn't transfer. You can notice on the block it's even spreading uh, smoother for me than it was over on this area here. So I might pick up just a little bit more ink and then we'll just go ahead and try to print it. I always set the brayer like this so you're not making brayer marks on the table that's one less thing you have to clean up later. But also when you do this, inevitably you're going to pick up the little rubber shavings from the carving on the brayer, and then those leave kind of weird little zit marks on your print. So I'm going to go ahead and take this over here to the area that we marked, like so. And you'll notice mine's not going to fit four times across here because it's not the same size as you guys are using. Probably not my world's best. Uh, my best demonstration ever, but I think we'll still get the point across. So, same process here as when we were transferring the graphite. I'm actually just using the spoon. The technical tool that you would use for this is called a baron, but it's not really much different or more effective than a spoon is. So, that's what we're doing. Some, some people use a press as well, but 
for block printing, I think the Baron is the more traditional method, and my experience is that it works better. You can also kind of test and see how your print's coming just by pulling it a little bit. Looks pretty good, so I'm just going to pull it the rest of the way. And that process is referred to as pulling the print. Okay, so for you guys, um, you're actually going to do three separate sheets of, of four prints. So before you went on to your next color, I would probably recommend taking two other sheets, preparing them like we did before, and as long as you got the, this pink ink out, make one of the prints here on this sheet, bam, and make one here on this sheet so you can kind of get a little bit more bang for your buck out of that pink ink while you have it out. So um, the reason you're going to make three sheets is it's kind of difficult to control the inking process and to get consistent opacity um, where it's not too thick and not too thin and get all your registration right is, is pretty tricky to do especially when you're going to do four prints per page. So basically the the reason we're doing one, two, three separate sheets is you're hedging your bets and you know you're hoping that out of the three one of them turns out better than the others and that's the one that you can turn in for a grade. And also the whole point of printmaking, the, the reason it exists and so, you know it was invented was so that you can make multiple copies um, you know versus a painting where you slave away for hours and you end up with one. Printmaking allows you to make multiples, right? So, um, the next step though, since, since uh, actually I think I'll print this with two other colors just for demonstration purposes, so. Okay, I decided I should go ahead and make three sheets myself just so I'm actually doing uh, or demonstrating what I'm asking you guys to do. So you can see I actually switched the position of the pink print in each of these as well. So, next step is we're going to clean this block off so that we can carve some more stuff off of it. So I'm actually going to walk inside my house for a second and rinse it off. This might seem kind of obvious. You know how to rinse something, but I'm just doing it so you know that it's a necessary step. Some kids forget to do this and you can't really see your old design very well if it's covered in ink and the tools get inky. And it's just cleaner to work on if you got a clean block. So go ahead and dry it off. And some of you guys might find that once you do your first print, it's kind of hard to see the pencil marks from the original design. So you, you can either go ahead and retransfer them line this up again and retransfer them or if you can still kind of see them a little bit like you can here you can just go ahead and draw them back in that's not a problem so the next next step is just to switch colors and continue printing uh, this the block with this first cut so I washed it off now I'm going to ink it up again with another color same process as the pink. This one's getting a little smoother, a little bit faster actually. So I don't know if I need to do as much of this rolling out on the second area, but that is really nice and smooth right there. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up this block with my turquoise. And I'm not going to cover up the pink yet. I'm still on the first layer just using a different color. This is going to give us the Andy Warhol effect of the same image printed with a different color combinations in different areas. And you can even use totally different colors. You don't have to just use these three through, throughout the whole process. So next, I've already got this one here. So here you can see all I have to do is put this one right next to this one. You have to be kind of careful so it's like right in line with it. And try not to leave any space. Just put it directly next to that one. And then 
flip it over. And rub the back of it with a spoon again. Pull the print. Not bad. It's a little more transparent, but I kind of like the look of that. Remember, we're going for kind of consistent opacity, so probably a little bit more like what you see with the pink one. So I'm going to do a blue on each of these three sheets as well. Try to keep your fingers clean, guys. If you get ink on your fingers and then you touch your paper, you end up getting little fingerprints and marks where you don't want them, and that kind of affects the, the craftsmanship and the look of your final product. So every, each time I make a print, I try to make an effort to actually rinse my fingers off if I got any ink on them so I don't mess up my, my project. Finally, we're going to do some black. I wouldn't necessarily recommend using black or even a dark color for your first print. Um, that's just because light dark colors tend to cover light colors better. And if you start with a dark color and then go to a light color, sometimes the dark one shows through and it doesn't doesn't look as good, but sometimes it works. And the reason I'm doing it here is black's the only other color I've got. If I was at school right now, I'd probably switch to a different color for a first layer print, but anyway. The main point here is you're doing four prints three in my case but four in your case because your blocks a little bit smaller than this four different colors with your first cut a more transparent on that one too so you'll get the feel for this you might want a little bit more ink or a little bit less ink the black ink seemed to have a little bit different consistency. The blue one was really um, pre pretty nice. This one was a little s wetter it felt like and the pink was a little stickier. So anyway I'm going to do two more blacks so I'm going to have three sheets total with the first layer. Three of those. So four in your case. You have it guys. You've got one, two, and three sheets uh, with the three different colors with just the first layer of ink. Notice how I altered the position of the different colors each time I printed too. I'm doing that for variety. You don't have to, but I think it's more fun and interesting to do it that way. So the next layer, we could use the same three colors, which is what I'm going to do because I've already got them out and I don't want to make another mess and I don't have any other colors. You guys do not have to stick to these three colors though. If you want to mix and match and get some different colors going, whatever you want to do. Um, if you want to stick with the same three and just have them in different positions on the layer, that looks kind of cool too because it gives it a little bit of unity, but it's up to you. A couple tips I will give you, um, uh, about this process in general is it's better not to cut out the parts along the edge first because when I have to register my next, uh, layer on top of it it's nice to be able to you know print the whole square edge like this and see where it is if I cut out this background first that wouldn't have printed that makes it much more difficult to register or line up the next time um, the other thing is you want to cut out a kind of a significant amount of material each time so you don't want to just cut out some little thin lines and then cover all that you know beautiful blue ink up with with black and only see some little thin blue lines. I mean, I think lines are good and they can add some detail, but this whole layer, the whole point of this layering process is that you see each color. So try to cut out some shapes of color in addition to just just little fine lines, so that each color can be seen, um, you know, sufficiently. All right. So next step is to rinse this block off and then start cutting. Uh, cutting out the, the areas for the next layer. Okay, so 
start cutting away the next areas and we're gonna you know act like this is a cooking show we're gonna put the turkey in the oven and voila the turkey is done and I have cut out all of the areas I need to for the next layer okay so um, I actually have three separate blocks for doing this so I can repeat the demonstration but you are only going to have one so you got to imagine that this was the same block that I just had before and now I've cut out these areas and I've removed some of those kind of shadow areas on the face there alright so we're going to go ahead and ink this up again and print over the top of one of these colors so this time maybe I'll start with the blue ink and this uh, is just kind of the same process repeated over and over again the main thing I would do want you guys to see however is how the layers interact so if I get some blue on here put it right over the top of the pink in that first print that I made hopefully this is enough to cover the pink adequately now this lining up process is called registration we want to register it accurately I kinda like to hover the block over the corners of the previous ink layer and then kinda set it down gently like that kinda press on it didn't quite get it right along the top but hopefully it's close enough mine don't register perfectly anyway because there's three separate blocks you'll have an easier time of doing it because you're carving from the same block each time so it's identical mine are, there's human error in mine I was not able to carve three identical things alright You don't have to wait very long between the layers to dry for, for the layers to dry either. They uh, they just cover each other up pretty nicely like that. So you can see there's a little bit of that 3D effect because my registration's off, but you get the concept. Now I'm going to do that with the blue ink, um, probably on each of the pink layers, and then switch to black and probably do a pink on top of the black and a black on top of the blue etc etc so this is the second layer we have to cover each of these you know remaining one two three four five six seven eight prints with the next layer so I'm just gonna do that and I'll show you the result okay now you can see I've printed the second layer of ink on all nine prints on all three sheets here so it's time to go on to the third layer. So I've rinsed my block off again and referencing my plan, I'm saying, okay, the, the last thing I'm gonna print is this stuff so I can cut off all the, the rest of it. So anything that's left, I, I will be printing. Anything that's left on the surface so I can start carving away Maybe I want to leave his hair black there, so I start carving away this stuff, and voila. Everything else is going to be remaining the last color. Everything that's left on the surface will be the next color I print. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and ink this up and do some more printing yet again. Maybe we'll start with black this time. I'm kind of running out of ink, so... I'm going to wipe this guy off, wipe the pink ink, I'm trying not to get any of the colors mixed together, spoon a little bit more of the black on here, kind of spread it out the width of the brayer, stick that back in there, and one last time. I'm going to ink this up. I'm kind of using this area to distribute the ink on the brayer and then this area up here. We're smoothing it out. 
and then coming over to the block. Also, I'm selectively just trying to get ink on the surfaces that are left. If I go down here or up in the corner, I will get some of the ink on those textured areas, which is okay. It's not the end of the world, but my intent is just to kind of keep the ink in this this area right here. So this is the last area I'm going to print. Let's go ahead and put the black on top of maybe this pink guy in the middle. Flip it over. You can also use your hands. Works almost as good as a spoon. I think you can put maybe a little bit more pressure with the spoon. But hands work pretty well too. Being careful about this region because as you can see that that last block actually broke on me. Don't know what happened to the other piece. But it still works pretty decently. So there you can see we have a three color print with the black on top of the pink on top of the blue. So I'm going to go ahead and do the third color layer on all of these and then you'll see what it looks like when it's all done. Alright, I'm going to print one of the third layers with the pink here just so you can see that I'm doing that with each of the colors. So I've got the third layer black here, black here, but in this case the third layer is going to be pink. So careful again about the registration. Line it up as best you can. Don't move it once you set it down though, that'll just make it worse. So rub the back. <clears throat> Keep the paper still while you're doing this process too. And then pull the print. So this sheet is complete. Got three prints with three color layers each. So I just have to finish the other two. Okay, final print here of the third layer is this turquoise color. See this one's already have three colors. This one already has three colors. This one just has the black and pink. So I'm putting the turquoise on to finish this one off. Registering accurately. Flipping over. Rubbing the back with the spoon. print. So here we have one, two, and three completed sheets with three prints and three layers of ink per print. Now again the reason you do three of them is that gives you the option to turn in the best one, the one that's got the best registration, got the most consistent opacity of the ink, it's not too thick or not too thin. Um, and you'll probably get better at this process as, as you go along. So, head your bets, make three of them, get a better grade. Here's another technique you can try with color. I'm going to scoop up some of this extra pink I have and just kind of spread it right next to the black almost so they're touching like that and then I'm going to take a clean brayer and I'm going to try to do this in a controlled way and just pick up ha black on half of the brayer and pink on the other half and just kind of roll these together in this direction so I get sort of this half and half effect and they'll start to blend together and you get this kind of gradient so I'm just going to put this on my uh, this is the second block that I have here and you can see how it kind of fades from black to pink there um, I have to keep the the brayer kind of right in the middle there though or else 
it'll just all mix together and it'll be kind of a dark pink so I'm missing the edges here so I'm just going to try to roll some extra pink just on this side of it and then um, take the extra black here and do the same on this side. Your block is narrower so that probably won't really be an issue. So we have two colors on the block like that and you can kind of see how this would look if we were to print it on here. transition effect it didn't work as well as it, it does sometimes there for me but uh, you know I'm feeling a little crazy I'm gonna just kind of pick up this pink and just kind of do this once and mix it with some of the black and just see what happens if I were to just mix and match all the colors like so maybe throw a little more blue in one area got some leftover ink so it's kind of like why not and go like that and just see what happens. This is an experiment, kids. And I'm gonna bother with the spoon. Just gonna use hands for this one. Pull the print. Kind of get a multicolor print to the first time that way. So Your turn to try it. Wait, is it this side, Brad? I'm also going to show you guys how to sign a print. A printmaker always signs their print in pencil rather than pen because a pen is ink and the print is ink. So signing it in pencil differentiates the signature from the print. Um, and that is the authentic way to do it. So starting right here, we're going to put what is called the addition number. An addition is a set of prints. And the addition number is generally um, what number this print was out of the total number. So if I made 100 prints, I'd put one, this is number you know, 17 out of 100. In this case, though, there's actually three prints on one page. So I think instead of just putting, you know, uh, number three out of ten or number one out of ten um, we're gonna put numbers like let's say this is my fourth fifth and sixth print and actually I had nine total so I'm gonna come in here and write four through six out of nine prints and do it kinda lightly this isn't supposed to be kinda detracting from the print um, let's see I'm gonna title this thing Kurosawa because it was inspired by a film, a samurai film by the famous director Akira Kurosawa. And then on this end, you don't want to go beyond uh, the edge of your print here. This is where you'd put your signature. So I'm going to put my name there. So you got edition number, title, and signature. That's how a printmaker signs their work. Okay, okay, you caught me. This wasn't a uh, too terribly original idea, and I know I'm always telling you guys to come up with your own original ideas, but I actually stole this image from the Kurosawa film cover. Uh, the actor's name here, the Japanese samurai in question, his name is Toshiro Mufune, and the film is based actually off of Shakespeare's Macbeth and uh, it's sort of the samurai era adaptation of Shakespeare's Macbeth. Kurosawa called it Throne of Blood. Pretty sweet. Check it out.